James Sonny Clark III, 1939 until 2004. As a child, Clark was recognized for his artistic gifts. As an artist coming of age during the civil rights storms of the 1950s and 60s, Clark strove to bring center stage the sufferings of a frustrated black America. Within the abstract expressionism of his art, his subjects widely exhibited the humiliation of racism and the distress of poverty. Likewise, many of his works were influenced by the civil injustices being experienced by black Americans. Born in Williamsburg, Virginia in 1939, Clark moved to and grew up in the West End of Richmond. Realizing his talent to draw horses, his father, a sanitation worker for the city of Richmond, and his mother, a housewife, encouraged the young Clark's abilities, and at age 10, they gave him his first paint set. Teaching himself to become an artist, Clark learned technique from books, lectures, and the distinguished art found in art shows and museums. The Richmond Professional Institute, RPI, now known as Virginia Commonwealth University, VCU, was Clark's first stop at formal art instruction. There, the brilliance of his talent was quickly appreciated. After hearing the conclusion of his professor that he was only wasting his time taking art classes, Clark withdrew from RPI and returned to his own self-study of art, particularly that of Dolly and Picasso. Clark himself became renowned for stylized figures. His works would have large eyes, distorted body limbs, and enlarged hands and feet. Oversized eyes were portals for viewing the souls of his subjects, while misshapen limbs symbolized the broken state of their spirits. Clark also drew attention to his subjects' search for a spiritual peace amid human calamity. Although fantastically gifted as an artist and interpreter of the human condition, Clark was famously modest. Despite being in demand, he was often reserved about showing his work. Usually, he had to be convinced that people would be even interested in viewing his art. Still, his pieces appeared in not only the local art shows of Richmond, but in the art fairs of New York, Washington, D.C., and Europe. Clark viewed his art as statements of personal inspiration. He painted what he wanted, when he wanted. And while he was offered opportunities for commissioned projects, he never chose to accept them.